All right, so now what we need to do is solve a problem that's related to our JavaScript. Now this script right here gets executed one time. Once the page loads, it's executed and it's ready to go. It will not execute again through dynamic content, which means that if I go to this page and I hit add more, of course, those work, right? Now, if I reload this page and hit save, the data is saved. This whole block is now dynamic content. For all intents and purposes, JavaScript now knows nothing about this stuff. So when I click on add more, it's like a brand new button. It does not work. Okay. So we need to solve that. And it's actually pretty simple. It's instead of doing this right here, we're going to go ahead and do document.add event listener of click, right? So now instead of having the event listener on the actual button itself, we're going to put it on the document. And I'll use an arrow method here, which takes in an event and just like that. So this is of course an arrow function. It's identical to what we had down here, except just slightly different and on the document itself. And so I'm going to go ahead and comment out the original one. And now we can do console log event.target and then event.target.id. I just want to show you this so you can see what's happening with this event listener. So I refresh in here. Every time I click on here, it's going to go ahead and show me something on this page at least. So if I hit add more, notice that it actually gives me that button as well as the actual, uh, you know, ID itself. So if I hit save and hit add more, hey, what do you know? It's still doing that. So the event is still being triggered in some way. It just needs to be triggered a little bit differently. So in other words, if I come in here and say, if the event target ID is equal to add more. Then I'll go ahead and run this add new form function here with event. So the actual event that's coming through because the events that happening, these two events would be the same. Now the next question is, do we actually use this add more button anywhere else? And the answer is, well, no. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that and get rid of this. So we save that. And so now this should actually work dynamically. Come back in. And let's hit save, add a new one and do chicken, you know, one and pound. We hit save and it seems to have saved everything. Maybe not, but we refresh in here. Looks like it still failed. So I'm actually not too worried about solving this problem, uh, but what we could do to solve it is most likely related to this right here. So we cut that out and the add new form button, I'm just going to add this in here. Because again, it's not actually triggering until, well, until we run this. So that means that that's when it's actually going to look for that element, not when the first page loads. So let's go ahead and try it again. I'll hit save, add more. This time we'll go ahead and do that again and save. Okay, it says data saved. Notice that the data did not go away. So I'm pretty confident that now it's working. Okay, so this shows us that if we do JavaScript correctly, one could argue this could be improved, of course, but if we do it correctly, JavaScript and HTMX can still live together. They can still work on things together. Now, the last, of course, thing that we would want to fix is inside of this form, when I click on save, I don't want to be able to hit that button again. That's just re-triggering the request over and over again. So there's a couple of ways on how we can do this. Now, before what we looked at inside of the form itself, uh, we actually looked at something like this, where it's div class equals to htmx indicator, and we can say loading, All right? So of course that will only happen if the request comes through. So if I click on save, it's gonna show me loading, or at least it should. Let, let me refresh this page and hit save, and there it is, okay. And notice that it actually reformatted where things are. No surprise there, I added in a new div class right here. So what's happening is when I actually call the hx-post or hx-get, uh, what's happening is it's actually adding the class of htmx request here. So this class then by default with htmx adds this to being able to be seen, but it's not about display. So let's go ahead and augment how these classes end up working. So if I leave that class on there, let's take a look. Uh, notice that loading is there. That's of course not something I want. I want it to be added by HTMX. So in base.html, what I'm gonna do now is add in a style here 
and it's going to be the HTMX dash request, then dot HTMX dash indicator. And this one is going to just be display inline. Okay, so that's what we want. But when this is being at any other time, we want to say display is none. Okay, so going back into this form, let's get rid of this class here, save it and refresh in here. Now the elements look the same. I hit save and what do you know? It now has loading more in line to this, which is fine. That actually works out pretty good. Um, but the part that's missing is hiding the save button. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a, another class for the save button. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and call it dash inverted indicator. Okay, so the inverted indicator is gonna be literally the opposite of what I just did for the HTMX indicator. So first off, inverted indicator, we're gonna go ahead and just do display inline. And then we'll go ahead and do the same sort of request here, but this time it's gonna be display none. Simple and easy way to just remove an element while that request is happening. So we hit save, that element's gone, it hits load. Okay, um, so we probably do not need this data saved anymore, although we could still keep it. Perhaps we put it down here um, instead of uh, at the top because the indication, you know, we might actually want that indication right next to these other items here. So I'm actually gonna put it maybe underneath here. So now it's not gonna bounce the page around as much. We hit save and data saved. Of course, we could put it in line as well. So there's a lot of other things that we could do, but there it is. I think that's actually really, really nice. And it's just a simple way to do a couple things with HTMX. Now, this is a lot of that paradigm shift because if we look at the way HTMX is interacting with HTML elements, it's doing it through CSS instead of through JavaScript. So inside of JavaScript, there's certainly a way to click a button and have another button go away or add a class to it or toggle a class to it. In this case, it's just using CSS for its built-in features to do really simple things, but very effectively. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so now that we've cleaned some of those things out, let's go ahead and take a look at that HTMX approach to editing all of this data right here.